idea that every person that you interact with, including yourself, is operating within a frame. And that frame, their perspective, you could also call it their worldview if you want, that, that frame, that perspective, that worldview is going to dictate how they act, the questions that they ask, the, the, the statements that they make, the way that they respond to things, okay? So in a sales context, like, like what we're all in, right, um, that frame typically is uh, we're the salespeople. We need a sale to happen, right? We, we, need, we need to make this sale. Um, and they are, you know, the all-powerful prospect who holds our fate in their hands and can decide yes or no whether, you know, we're going to eat today, right? That's, that is the typical salesperson's frame. And even when you try to talk yourself out of that frame, like, oh, no, I, I feel great. I have something valuable to offer. Sometimes underneath all of that positive self-talk is still that weak frame that, I need something from you, Mr. Prospect, okay? And just, and just check in on yourself and see if that's ever been true for you and see if sometimes maybe that's even true the majority of the time uh, without you being aware of it. So once, once you identify something, it's a lot easier to spot it, right? So, so now that I'm calling your attention to it, maybe you're like, oh, you know what? I, I do act like that. Same thing with recruiting, right? When you recruit, if you're a recruiter, a weak frame, an example of a weak and yet very common frame is, man, I got to see if I can talk somebody into doing this job today. You know, I got to grow my team. You know, I need to hit these recruiting numbers. Uh, who can I get to join my team? That is a weak and needy frame. Okay. Anytime that you need something, right, you're in a weaker position. Just think about it. Supply and demand, right? That's Darwin. If you need something, you are a supplicant, right? You need something. You are dependent on someone else to provide it, right? Or for somebody else to be weak enough that you can take it from them, okay? <laughs> if you want to go Darwin on it. So the needier you are, the weaker your frame is, right? And so in prospects, just in general, right? I have the, if I'm a prospect, think about the time that you're a prospect, right? You walk into a department store, you got money to spend, you are the buyer, right? You are in charge, right? Um, I'm going to buy what I want. Nobody's going to sell me anything. Da, da, da. You know, somebody, I, I mean, I walked into a department store the other day and was like, I, I knew exactly what I needed to go get. And I didn't know where it was. And, and this guy came up to me and the uh, a salesperson was like, Hey, sir, can I help you? And I was like, Nope, just looking. Right. Even though, <laughs> I, I, yeah, I did need help, you know, and then I, I actually caught myself and was like, oh, you know, I, actually, come back here. <laughs> I actually do need, <laughs> this is what I need, and, and I need to get out of here. And they're like, okay, follow me, right? But we're so programmed as prospects, as buyers to reject salespeople, right? That, and that's just hard-coded in. That's the frame that culturally we inherit, okay? And so, and, and we all know that. Right. And so when when you're as a salesperson, when you're approaching someone, you're giving a presentation, you just automatically your default is, you know, that the outcome of this thing is dependent on them. OK, and it puts you in a weaker frame, puts all of us in a weaker frame. Right. So the, the rule number one about frames is. That the strongest frame always wins. The strongest frame always wins. So how can you, thinking about back to my Indonesia example, how can you flip the frame around to where you have the strongest frame legitimately, right? How can you flip the frame around? So it, and I'll, I'll speak on two levels. So one, just generally about insurance, and then the second level specifically about the time that we're in right now, okay? So generally about insurance, Okay, what, what is the hardest thing about obtaining insurance coverage? Um, so if you think about it, right, have you ever been in a situation where you needed insurance and it was hard to get? You know, maybe, maybe you had, a, maybe you had a, a few too, traffic, too many traffic tickets on your record and you went to Allstate and they, and they said, no, no, we're not covering you, bro, right? I've been there. <laughs> That's why I'll never do business with Allstate again, jerks. Uh, but... Uh, I've been there and then I had to go down to, uh, you know, uh, 
what was the name of that guy? It was in Houston. Dan, you know him. Uh, it's the Ed Lawyer. Frank, yeah, that's it. Yeah, I went down there, went down there, and got me some insurance, man. <laughs> some other carrier. So the hardest thing about obtaining insurance is getting the insurance company to give it to you. That's a fact, right? I mean, there's 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 two worlds of insurance, right? There's the there's the need to have world, which which we could we call the property casualty world, right? Like I can't drive a car without it, right? I can't open my business without without it. I have to obtain it, right? And so as a result, that property casualty side of the business, generically speaking, like the prospects in a much weaker frame, you know, because uh, they have to obtain it. Now on the good news that uh, they don't care where they obtain it from, so they can gain some of their power back because they can shop it around, right? On our side of the business, life and health side of the business is a nice to have. It's a nice to have, not a need to have. You're not breaking any laws by not having a cancer policy, right? It's a nice to have, right? So as a result, we have to think about how can I make my frame so strong, right, that the prospect falls into it, falls into my frame, right? And so, and part of that is just by, is by knowing, you knowing that insurance companies have all of the power in terms of whether this person gets insurance or not, okay? It's not up to them whether they get that insurance. And it's not up to you whether they get that insurance. In fact, who it's up to is some underwriters, right, in an office far, far away that are going to look over their paperwork and make a decision, you know? And now it's even, I mean, it's not better. It's actually worse, uh, empirically worse, but it's better for us because it used to be I could call up underwriting when it was just family heritage and go, hey, you know, uh, here's the situation. Now I can't even call that. They don't even have a phone number. I got to use an email address, right, to talk to underwriting. So that's literally like, like, uh, like the way Indeed is, right? If I want to try to uh, get, my, get my family heritage ad on Indeed, you know, I can't talk to anybody to get it approved. It's just out of my hands, right? I can't even call up a salesperson. I'm in a very weak frame in that situation. So it's the same thing with, with insurance, right? Family heritage is the one that's going to decide whether or not this person can have the hospitalization policy or have the cancer policy or have the heart policy. Not them, not us as agents. I have, in fact, the only job that I have here, uh, Mary, is just to answer some questions and plug it into this computer, and then they're going to make a decision. Okay, I don't even, honestly, I don't even know if you can get it, right? And one of the things about, you know, and I got to tell you, Mary, um, one of the things that I love about my job is just how awesome the products are, okay? I mean, they're awesome. You know that. I've already showed them to you. One of the things that I really don't like about my job is that family heritage doesn't take just everybody. They're not blue cross. They don't have to give a policy to everybody who comes and knocks on the door, you know? But the good news is if you want a cancer policy, <clears throat> I can probably, we can probably get you one, right? You can get one from Aflac or Colonial or Combine. There's a bunch of different companies that sell you a cancer policy, okay? Unfortunately, family heritage, because our policies are unlimited, because they come with no price increases ever because they're guaranteed renewable for life. So once they take you on, they can never get rid of you ever. And because they're going to give you 100% of your money back, obviously they can't just offer that program to everyone, right? They got to be careful about who they take in or it would be astronomically expensive. Does that make sense? Awesome. So let me just ask you a couple of questions real quick, just to see if there's any reason for us to keep talking because I don't want to waste your time. Think about how many times somebody's told you, oh, I don't want to waste your time, you know? And, and, and oh, okay, well, uh, I appreciate that, man. It won't be a waste of your time, though, I promise. Like, it'll be really worth you looking at it. See, that's, a, that's, a, that's an example of a strong frame from the prospect and a weak frame from the salesperson, right? So imagine being able to use that phrase yourself. Hey, thank you, man, thank you. I, I don't want to waste my time either, it's super valuable. Let me just ask you a couple of quick questions to see if it's even worth us scheduling a call. So the last thing I want to do is schedule a call and then you know you not even be able to get the coverage. I mean, that would be silly, right? So, okay. Let me ask you, I, I know two questions off the top of my head. The rest of it the computer's gonna do, right? I mean, I'm not I don't even know what the computer does in the background, but you know, I can ask you a couple of questions to see if I can even hit the submit button, you know, and then we'll let the computer do the work. Okay. So I don't know if that's helpful, but like that idea of it's not up to me, man, like 
the decision maker, think about that, right? Think about like as a prospect, and you've been in these situations, right? Where the, the, you sit down with the wife and the wife tells you, I can make the decisions. I do everything. I got the checkbook right here, man. You know, I'm the one. And then you get to the end and she goes, oh man, I really need to talk to my husband. And you're like, man, you just told me you could do all this yourself, right? <laughs> well, that's a decision maker. She, and she knows, she's, she's smart. She, oh, if the decision maker's not here, there's nothing we can do, right? So that you can use that, okay? You take that and put it in your frame. Hey, I'm not the decision maker. You're not the decision maker, you know? I mean, we don't even know if there's anything to decide about until we put your information in this computer here and see what the company says, right? And if, if they say you can have it, well, now you have a decision to make. Do you want to keep it, right? That, that makes sense, you know? But I mean, why would you want to think about something you can't even think about? That makes no sense, you know? Let's see if you qualify for it first. And then, you know, uh, you can decide what you want to do with it. You know, once they're, listen, John, uh, just off the record here, man, um, you know, I, I'm an insurance agent, okay? I could sell for anybody. I don't work for this company. I work for myself, okay? Um, I don't know what kind of health issues you got going on, and I'm not going to sit here and ask you a bunch of questions, okay? I'm not going to ask you what prescriptions you're taking and when the last time you smoked a joint is. And I'm not going to do any of that because I don't care, okay? Um, if they're if they're silly enough to take you into this policy, right, then you have something to think about, okay? Um, but before that, I mean, you're just kind of wasting your time. You know, it's like, it's like, John, you ever go, you, you ever go look at a house, you know, with a realtor without your wife, right? And, uh, and, and, and just fall in love with it, you know? Have you ever done that? No, you've never done that, right? But has your wife done that? You bet, right? And when she comes back to you and says, hey, I found this house, that's our next house we're moving into. And you're looking at it going, man, we can't afford that, right? It's like, why look at something that you know you're going to fall in love with if you don't even know you can have it yet? Okay, that's, that's strong frame. That's taking the frame back to yourself, okay? So um, another example of this too, and I know I'm running short on time, but another example of this is also like, like skepticism. So people that are skeptical, right? Just remember, like people that are skeptical, um, the most skeptical person wins always, okay? So, you know, you, you walk up to somebody and they're skeptical, right? All you have to do is be more skeptical than they are and you win, okay? It's just the same example of, of, of strong frame, right? Well, I never heard of this company. That's okay. They never heard of you. How do they know you can even pay your bills on time? I'm, not, I'm just kidding. Of course, you pay your bills on time. You know, this company is AAA rated, blah, 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 blah. I mean, what else do you need to know? Warren Buffett invests in um, those kind of things. Who invests in you? No, I'm just kidding. I don't need to know that. Here, let me just ask you a couple of health questions, okay? <laughs> so, <laughs> all right. Anyway, uh, I could go on and on. It's like my favorite topic, but um, I'll open it up for questions because sometimes I think the better, uh, uh, you get some better stuff in a back and forth. So, Danny, back to you, bud. Eric, uh, Brian wants to know uh, when... Uh, when is it that you get that you make the transition to uh, letting them know that they're eligible for the coverage? How do you let them know that if you're telling them that they're just being applied for right now? You don't. You don't. That's not your job. Okay. So back in the old days, Brian, um, we used to use these paper things, and you would fill out the paper, and then you would uh, you would mail it into the company. It's crazy, I know, but like this is literally what we had to do. And on the top of that piece of paper it said it, the paper was called something. It had a, it had a legal name at the top. It was called an application. Okay. And it's just like, I'm not, I'm not being facetious. It an application. It's not an enrollment form. It's an application form. Okay. So just like there's a big difference between applying to go to Harvard and enrolling in Harvard, right? Applying to go to Harvard costs you 150 bucks. Enrolling in Harvard costs you 150,000. It's a big difference, right? So all we're doing is applying for coverage, okay? There's no screen on your computer when you press the submit button. There's no screen that comes up and goes, congratulations, your client has coverage. Does it? All it says is, congratulations, your application has been submitted, okay? If, and then what does it say? It says, if accepted, their first draft will be after you hit the submit button, right? If accepted, but you, they never tell you that, okay? The first time that you as the agent, and by the way, you're, the, you're going to be the first one that knows because you're the agent. So if you're signed up for text, text uh, notifications, 
the first thing you're going to get is a text on your phone and it's going to say, hey, this policy was issued. That's when you text your client and you let them know, um, I didn't, but I'm going to go. I just, uh, <clears throat> um, so that's when you tell them. So, so what I tell them at the end is I say, okay, great. Um, uh, Chelsea, it looks like, it looks like we've submitted your application. It looks like the company's taken it. So that's great. So you got past hurdle number one, which is these health questions. Okay. Now, uh, they may, I don't know uh, what they do, what their underwriting process looks like. They may pull your medical records. They may pull your MIB. They may, you know, call a doctor. I don't know. But at some point, it's going to go through underwriting and they're going to make a decision of, you know, yes, Chelsea, either you have the coverage or no, Chelsea, you don't. Okay. The nice thing I do like about this company is it's a hundred percent decision. Okay. It's kind of like passing your driver's exam, right? You're not, you didn't 70% get it. You know, you're either a driver or you're not a driver. And it's the same thing. You're either covered or you're not covered. And I'm going to know that either later this afternoon or tomorrow, hopefully, barring any complications, okay? When I find out, what's the best number for me to text you and let you know? Awesome, Eric, I got a second question for you. That's now. great. So the second question is, uh, framing is, is obviously gonna be different in a face-to-face -face format versus what we're doing now in a you know, phone format. So many of us are, are on the phone. Where would you, I, I guess, my specific question to you would be, how do you present a really strong frame on a phone call, especially with this COVID-19 thing going on, where you, you're trying to let somebody know how important it is for them, first of all, to hear you, and second of all, to make that decision today? Yeah, great question. So, you're, so think about this, man. Your frame is not something that you can put on and take off. It's not, it's not a switch that you, that you press at, okay, I'm in the presentation now. Time to have a strong frame. Okay, your strong frame has to exist the entire time you're dealing with somebody. Okay, it's, it's called uh, congruence, right? So a congruent frame is, is, is of something that hangs together. The person, the prospect feels like, man, this, this is just the way this guy is, right? And so you want to start with a strong frame in your approach, okay? So a lot of us, right, especially during this time, I know I was on Van's call and he was like, uh, he was like go into your phone and you've got 1,100 contacts and you should call those people, right? And I know when, when he hung up the, that, that call, people were like, man, I, how am I supposed to call? I, I don't want to. And, and just ask yourself, like, did you think I don't want to make money off of people during a crisis? You know, I don't want to look like an asshole. Oh, pardon me. I don't want to, you know, I don't want to, uh, I don't want to take it, seem like I'm taking advantage of a disaster, right? If those thoughts crossed your mind, that is weak frame. Okay. And it's also, I just want to like uh, press pause here and just, talk some truth. Okay. It's also a massive disservice to people. You know, I mean, if you had the cure to this thing and it was in your trunk and you were like, man, you know, I only have enough to, to heal X number of people. So I have to charge. So I have to create some barrier. I can't just give it away or else, you know, it's going to be gone overnight. So I got to create some kind of, you know, but, but I don't want to tell anybody because I don't want to make any money off people during it. That's crazy. Right. I mean, you, it's your duty. It's our duty to tell people that they can protect themselves, especially right now, right? It's our duty. I mean, so just get that in your head. I mean, that's, and, and, if, you, and if you don't believe that, then, I mean, I just want to challenge you, like, what kind of a human being are you, okay? You, there's, you, your friends and family could go through this thing. My, my parents are in their 70s. You know, if they get this thing, they're more than likely going to go to the hospital. They're more than likely going to, you know, it's very 50, 50 chance I could end up in the ICU. I mean, that, that's a fact. Why would I not tell it? Hey, listen, dad, you know, I want to talk to you about this program that I have never talked to you about it before, but just given every, and this is my favorite phrase right now. You want to, you want an easy access and easy frame. Listen, just given everything that's going on in the news right now, um, I feel like it'd be a massive disservice if you didn't know about one of the programs uh, that I have that I've never talked to you about before. Just a massive disservice. I don't want that on my conscience. Let me just talk to you about it for five minutes, right? Oh, Eric, that's cool, man. If it's insurance, I'm not interested. Awesome. Uh, it is insurance and I have no idea whether you could even get it, okay? Uh, what I'm saying to you is it, it's, it would be a massive disservice for me if I didn't at least let you know about it can you do me a favor and help me get this off my conscience and meet me on my zoom room for 10 minutes? 
Okay. Awesome. Yeah. That's not, and you just be very careful. You don't need anything. Okay. At the end of the day, now I'm not speaking to my parents, obviously, but, but, but somebody who's like, you know, not, not a blood family member, right? It doesn't matter to me. I'm covered, right? I mean, if I, if my family goes into the hospital, we're taken care of. Okay. Uh, and we still need God's help to heal, but what, you know, money wise, we're good. Right. So it doesn't matter to me whether you get this or not. I mean, it's not going to affect me at all, right? At all. Because during this week, I'm going to find 10 or 15 people that want this coverage and apply for it. So it doesn't matter whether it's you or not. Okay. It doesn't even affect my ability to eat, right? It does affect my, 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 the way I see myself as a human being if I don't tell you about it. That's strong, Frank. 